Well chaps, welcome to another episode of TA Outdoors. This is a three day bushcraft trip. I'm here with Dustin. You guys should remember Dustin from one of our previous videos where we were actually in a pine forest. We built some raised beds uh, and we put a tarp over them and we had a really good cook up. We are in for another epic cook up guys. It's gonna be really good. Uh, Dustin's, we've just been building this kind of hazel widdy shelter. I don't know what you would call it, but basically we've got a load of hazel saplings uh, we shoved them in the ground, we've made a kind of dome shape. They're all like interlocked, kind yeah, of like holding a nice it, structure. It all keeps itself together where it's so interlocked and because they're so springy, where they're saplings, it just helps to keep a rigid structure. We're here, like I say, for three days and we have got some pretty cool forecasts coming our way. We do. Today is already very windy. Uh, tomorrow we've got some rain coming in and then on Friday, we're, we're Wednesday today, on Friday we've got 40 mile an hour winds and rain as well. So. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a true test of our shelter that we've built here. We are gonna use some man-made materials. We're gonna get a tarp. It's a four by four meter tarp. We're gonna put it over the top of the shelter. Dustin has put, is that a deer hide up there? It's a deer hide just to protect the, where all the hazel come up at the top. Some of them are woven around. Some of them come, come a little bit short and they're a bit sharp. Yeah, spiking. What I don't wanna do is ruin my tarp. So I just put a deer hide. One of the deer hides I've found in the past. I just put one over the top just to take out all those sharp edges on the top. And we've also got Amber with us. If you guys remember, uh, Dustin's dog, Amber, a bundle of fun, full of energy. Is she? She's somewhere around. <laughs> She's somewhere around, but we've got Amber with us and uh, it's gonna be a great trip. Stick along guys, it's gonna be a real fun video. Here we are. This is our, this is what we've got for two nights, three days. This is what we're staying in. Uh, we have spent quite a bit of today just scouting the area, looking for a good place to make camp. Uh, we're in October now. It is pretty much beginning of October. I've driven an hour and a half to get here to Dustin's place. And actually the woodland, the trees here, the leaves, they haven't turned color like they have where I am. So it's quite interesting. It's almost like uh, back in the summer still, but we've got some, uh, some good weather anyway, so. We're going to crack on. We need to build a fire pit now, don't we? We do, yeah. Get a fire going, cook some food up. And Dustin has got a real treat for you guys, so I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have a fire here. About here, yeah? Yeah, fire nice pit. fire there, cook some food up, bit of chicken. And uh, we blend in, don't we? Look at that. That absolutely blends in, that camo tarp. Stealth shelter. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, let's get this fire going. This is the pack I've got with me for three days. Uh, it's a 30 litre pack. It's got gloves on the outside cooks are on the outside going wool blanket going a bit old school got the wool blanket underneath uh, and various sleeping gear in here i've got a foam sleeping pad although i don't need it because dustin said that we're going to make some kind of natural beds possibly with cedar boughs or something like that which is going to be super cool uh, and then i've basically just got mostly camera batteries and camera gear in here uh, and just the odd sort of spare layer of clothing for where it gets a bit chillier at night but we're, we're not forecasted to get down to too cold tonight. I think we might be in double figures for Celsius, so that's pretty good. Uh, like I was saying, it's, it feels a bit more like back end of summer. We've got a good spell of weather coming in, except for the rain. <laughs> That's every dog's thing. Ooh, we human on the floor. We then go. Alright, 
So as per previous episode, Dustin's brought some hides with him, some deer hides, and we've got some sheepskin wool, well, sheepskin ones to go on top. So we've got, we didn't, the, the hides benefit because we don't have to go and get loads and loads of cedar boughs. So we just got a, pretty much a, a big armful. And now you can see what Dustin's doing. He's just putting the hides down on top of that, which will prevent any sharp sticks and thicker, kind of thicker diameter or circumference cedar boughs from digging into our back. And obviously Amber's got her bed in the middle as well. How's it looking? It's looking good. We might need to get a few more. Yeah, we'll probably pad it out a bit later, but we need to get that fire going, don't we? We do, yeah. I think we should get the fire going, get some, um, some meat on the go. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, the meat sweats are coming, I can feel them. So as you can see, it's starting to get dark now. We've just got the fire going. We're kind of backing off of the shelter stuff for the time being because we need to get some food. And I'm really looking forward to the food tonight. I cannot tell you, it's going to be amazing. Every time I come here with Dustin, it's always incredible food. But um, it's lovely, lovely evening. You can see it's kind of light still, but it's going to get dark. It's 10 past six now. And it's going to get dark in about an hour, 10 past seven, yeah, quarter past seven, half past seven, it's going to be dark. So we've done most of the major jobs that we wanted to do. Now it's time to cook up some good food.
Right, so in here I'm just going to add a bit of oil and this will allow us to turn it into a bit of a paste when it comes to smearing it onto the chicken, it'll give us a nice rub. In here we've got some mixed herbs, we've got some paprika and some tandoori spice. So I'm just going to cut into these breasts and the legs. There's a couple of cuts them a few times. What this will do is it will break through the skin, allowing us to really get that mixture that rub into the chicken, into the meat to give us that maximum flavour. So we've mixed it together. I'm going to use one of these shavings, just a hazel shaving. And we'll mix it together to make a nice, nice little paste. Paste, what I mean is a bit of a marinade. And what we'll do is when this is cooking, we'll be every so often using a brush, which would be a pine needle brush, We'll just brush the chicken with the marinade just to keep that flavour in. But for now what we'll do is we'll just pour a bit of this marinade onto our chicken like this and we're just going to rub it in nicely so it goes in all over, everywhere. All those cuts that I've made, that's where the flavour is going to be hiding. So we've got loads of dry wood here. Oh, camera lens. Pretty sure it's hazel, isn't it? Yeah, I think the majority of the wood here is hazel. It's mostly hazel, but it's just so, so pretty much tinder dry where we've still not had loads of rain this, uh, this back end of summer and most of the summer. So it's handy for us with this fire because it's just tinder dry, easy to break. And we just can get a nice pile going for firewood. Chicken's coming along good. It's coming along good. She just ate a load of uh, dipping sauce. Oh, did she? Yeah. Did she lap that up? Yeah. Amber! Are you joking? No. <laughs> Is there a bit left? <laughs> Amber, that's our dipping sauce. There's a bit left for a marinade. Yeah, it's cooking good. Just put some oil in this tiny little Dutch oven. That is so small, mate. I know. <laughs> I've never seen so one that tiny. small. Now that the oil's in there, I've got some cheese. We're going to put the cheese into this, put the lid on, and now place this next to the fire. And over the next 45 minutes to an hour or so, this cheese will hopefully melt and it'll be next level stuff. <laughs> what, what these guys don't know is this cheese absolutely hums. It does. It, it, it really is stinky. This is a French cheese. It's called raclette. And uh, yeah, it's check it out. Check out raclette cheese and how you normally eat it. So, buy yourself a nose plug at the same time. Yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> honking. It really is honking stuff. So I'm just cutting off the edge. There we go. I'm going to place the cheese into here, like that, with a bit of pepper on top. And then we'll probably give it, as I said, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, quite a lot of pepper. Once it melts down, we're going to mix it up a bit. That on the top, it doesn't have to go into the embers, we'll just put it on the edge of the fire, like that, to gently warm. I think it's time we gave it a turn. Yes. So the idea is to cook it like that to get them bones heated up straight away and really, really get the bones cooking. Now we're going to flip it. So, 
rotate it like that. Oh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And now we'll just wait for that. Give it another half an hour, get a bit of colour. And we'll turn it again. I can feel the meat sweats already. I'm sweating more than that chicken. This sort of cooking, it doesn't, it, it's not quick. We're talking maybe an hour and a half of cooking this over the fire. Maybe an hour and a half, maximum two hours. But it all depends on how hot the fire is, how near the meat is to the heat. It's all about adjusting it. Every so often we'll, we'll get some wood, we'll turn some of these, we'll throw them in the front. Maybe we'll move it back if it's too hot. Damn. <laughs> Dude, you've outdone yourself. It's looking good again. That is incredible. I can smell that and the cheese and everything. Right. How are we looking? Lovely, lovely. Well, the idea is that we just grab one of these flatbreads and we just carve into this a bit. Getting the meat sweats, mate. Not oh, gonna lie, getting, getting the meat sweats. sweats. And again, skews fingers. Yeah, who cares? And now the idea, so this is, remember, this is that raclette cheese. So it's been on there for maybe, what, an hour and a half, uh, an hour yeah, and 45 minutes. Hour, yeah. This is really, really good stuff. Oh man. So I'm just gonna give it a little mix. That's just what it needs. I'm gonna put a few carrots and a few of these peppers in here. Spoon-wise, what am I going to use? Well, believe it or not, I'm actually going to use one of these flatbread. There's no complaining now. This is damn. So this is it. Wow. Oh, that. Should we finish off with a little squeeze of lemon? Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's it's really good. You have all done yourself. And it's been on there for you know an hour and a half, an hour and forty-five minutes, and I think it's cooked really well. There's no burnt bits. It's cooked really well. Yeah, We've kept nice an eye on the fire. Nice parallel fire. Oh. Our survey says? Oh. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> With that cheese as well. That's living good right there. Oh, this is really good. Right, I'm tucking in. I'm putting the camera down. <laughs> this looks just ridiculous, oh. mate. I was saying to Dustin earlier, every time I come here with Dustin and do a video, I just eat like a king. Just ridiculous. I've never eaten so good in the woods, ever. Except when I come with you. I just, love it. Just insane. Look at this, this um, sauce on this chicken smells incredible. That marinade. Oh, dude. <laughs> so I've just got a bit of chicken. Let's get a bit of cheese on there. Nice and early. First time having raclette cheese. Raclette cheese. It's already like solidifying where it's so good. Let's get mm. some carrots. Pepper. <laughs> I'm going straight in for another oh one. Oh my god. That cheese. The cheese just makes it. It really does. Oh. You guys are missing out, honestly. I'll try and put the recipe for all of this below and how it's long just we a really nice how long we cooked it and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Nice simple rub. Just mm. a bit of just a bit of care. You just gotta keep an eye on it. You don't want it to burn. You know, oh. sit down, chill out. Yeah. And it's just to get cosy and then eventually your food cooks. Insane. This is just, just carving off the chicken like that. Mm. Being able to carve off a whole chicken. It's like a Sunday roast, but way better. I probably, in fact, I probably eat better here than I do at home when I come to see you. <laughs> I actually eat better for you. <laughs> Look at this. That cheese is, is going solid already. It's crunchy carrots.
Well, we have had an absolute feast so far tonight. It's been lovely. <laughs> I, was, I was crying away for more chicken down here. But uh, we're going to call it a night. It's now, I think it's about half ten. Half ten? Half ten, yeah. Yeah, I think we're about half ten. So we've had some beers and we've had a good time relaxing, catching up. Weather's absolutely lovely at the moment. It's just nice and warm. There's a little bit of wind and we have to pin down the size of the shelter, but I'll talk you through that tomorrow. And yeah, so we're going to call it a night and we'll see you guys in the morning. Look at this cosy setup. It's looking cosy in there. It's time to get the wool blanket out. What are you crying for, Amber? <laughs> sure, she just sits right in front of the camera. In prime position. She's a lady. Oh, that, that is good. That fire, down, a bit man. of warmth. Well, good morning, guys. We uh, both slept pretty well. Did you sleep all right, Dustin? I did, yeah. Yeah, we both slept pretty well. Amber was pretty good through the night as well. Yeah, exactly. We had a couple of rain showers, and I don't know if you can hear it now, but it's starting to rain. And I looked at the forecast, uh, and what was meant to be light rain this morning is now turned into heavy rain, uh, and it's already started. So what we're going to do is we've got a spare tarp just here, and we're going to try and s string it up maybe somewhere just in front of the shelter. Uh, it's going to be a true test of the shelter for the next two days because yeah, we've got yeah. heavy rain today and strong winds tomorrow But we are in a dense wooden if you can see this That's it. That's it's all it's only got to see us through till tomorrow So hopefully it should be okay fires completely out because we had a fair amount of rain last night So we'll get this tarp up get the fire going get some breakfast going and then we can focus on what we're going to do for the day Right, we're just rigging up this tarp to keep the rain off. So we found some dead uprights, some dead wood. Wrapping this paracord around the corner to keep it locked in. And then keeping tension on this, I'm gonna take it down to where I think I'm gonna peg it. About there, and then I'm just gonna put a little loop on the end. Once I've got my loop, I'll then thread this line back through so now this is ready for a peg so let's reach down here and grab the peg put it through there and now what we have to do is bang it in
Richard. Well, that was quite an easy way of getting the fire going. That was. I was just using the fire steel and the, and the back of the knife. Tinder wise, we just used some of these dead ends that are in the fire from last night. We went to bed, the fire went out, woke up, these are still dry. A few strikes onto the, onto the uh, dried charred coal or charred ends. Straight away, ember, blow them together. Lovely. Now we can have a tea, finally. We can finally have a cup of tea. Have a, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, get put, it on there. Let's put that there. Go on, son. Let's just move this fire. Let's move this fire down a bit. We'll get some more wood for the fire as well. There we go. We've got a pot hanger set there up now. Go. Camp is looking good. Look at this. Got the tarp. Got the shelter. Beds. Lovely. Now I've got to find the dog. <laughs> <laughs> My little apple cookser. You say you made. You're telling me you made that. Yeah, I made that. And then uh, this is a bit of lime cordage. I really like lime cordage. Naturally. Makes a very nice, strong, neat, neat cordage that doesn't have any or bits that fray. Yeah. Uh, almost jute wine would fray more than that. It would. Like, it certainly would. Yeah. That's really good. We've got the fire going. We're gonna get some breakfast on. Oh, is it gonna be another feast? Wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> My wife Em, she always makes bloody strong teas. Like when I first met her, and it, it, it kind of like stains your mouth. It's yeah. like you it's end like, up walking around yeah. with this like dry mouth. Yeah. Strong tea for me is like it's like blended cardboard <laughs> with hot water. I love a strong tea. And it just tea. leaves us. Oh, I love oh, it. Oh no. But I never used. To, I used to be like you. I always used to have milky tea. Then I met Em, my wife, and she made me really strong tea. And I just yeah. she kept doing it out of habit, and I just got used to it. Yeah. I didn't like it at yeah. first. I just got used to it. And now I absolutely love it. And I, when I go around Dad's, he's he's like milky he, as anything. He, he loves a milky tea. Does he like an Earl Grey? No, he likes standard like PG tips oh, really? or something. But he likes the milky. Because I yeah. used to have like Tetley's and make it quite milky. And then I discovered Earl Grey. Mate, and it was like Yorkshire tea is the best. If you can get yeah. Yorkshire, oh, there's no going back. Honestly, if you Yorkshire tea, if you have it once, there's no going back. It's it's the tea to have. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, mate. It's a slow morning. Yeah. <laughs> mm. oh, that's good. Warms the soul. Uh, as you guys can see, we've brought, we've, we've made a, a pot hanger setup. Simple, simple kind of uh, wide branches in each corner, a cross brace, and then some pot hangers for the kettle. We've got the Dutch oven as well. Yeah. Gonna be doing some Dutch oven cooking, Dustin's telling me later. Yeah. Gonna do some Dutch oven cooking. Obviously we still got breakfast. Uh, and there's a few camp tasks that we're gonna do, but we're quite pleased with it so far, aren't we? We could do with building a bit of a firewall, yeah. you know, a, a, a fire reflector, a reflector. at yeah. the back. Because we last night it got temperatures didn't obviously freeze overnight, but it did get quite chilly once that fire had gone out. Uh, and obviously once the fire was going, we realised that the, the heat was just being wasted, wasn't it? Just it was, dissipating. Yeah. 
We could feel it in the shelter, but yeah, it we, it could be much more efficient if we built a fire reflector and but then got that heat. When the fire right. was going, the heat coming in here, it was like a yeah. dome reflecting it all. It back. was lovely, it was like, wasn't it? It was like a pocket of hot air in here. Mm. It was really nice. It, it wasn't it wasn't cold. It wasn't uncomfortable. No, but we'll make it, it more comfortable right. now. We're we're slowly getting through each day, making it more comfortable. Exactly. So we got the tarp because it has been raining. Uh, although it's meant to be a lot heavier than it is at the moment, so we're, we're getting away with it. And uh, yes, got the tarp up, got a better cooking set up, and the beds were fine, you know. I, I thought the uh, cedar boughs, I thought we didn't have enough cedar boughs. They were absolutely fine, yeah. They, they, were they weren't uncomfortable. Yeah. They were nice, warm, insulating. Yeah. It wasn't damp or anything. No, no was... they were good. Those, I was saying to Dustin, right. those sheepskins are the dogs. They are, they are so good. They are. They make a massive difference. I got up once in the night last night. Uh, to Amber, Amber woke both of us up. And what was she doing? She was, well, it was so funny. She, when I heard her, she was she was, she was over the back there, end of the fire, beyond the fire. The fire had gone out, and she was licking something. And yet, I've forgotten to put away that small Dutch oven, that small pot the, that we had, that the raclette the, cheese that the raclette cheese was in. She somehow managed to lick <laughs> the lid off, so the lid had fallen off, <laughs> and this cheese in the bottom that's like solidified. She's trying to really get her bottom drawer in there oh, and scrape no. it out. And uh, it was quite entertaining. She looked at me like, oh, please help. So I just quickly took it. I put it up on the branch, you know, off the ground. I think we'll do it all in this one. When it comes oh, to I didn't it. see that. Yeah, proper skillet. Yeah. Feels like um, afternoon, like late afternoon. Because of what? Because it's sort of gone so dark, dark again. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? It is a proper dark, overcast day. Are these like uh, the baking potatoes? They are. Jacket spuds, as they say. I like this knife. Perfect in the sense of size. That's what a three-inch blade, three, three and a half-inch, four-inch handle. Proportion-wise, it's absolutely perfect, isn't it? I don't know what the scale material is. It's curly birch. Oh, is it? That's my knife, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, curly birch. Yeah, it's nice. I did the handle. That's why it's pants. Did you do that? Yeah. What on your? Like you did all the. I just the got pins the blank, and... and you know it was like, I just rounded it all off. Yeah. That. The pins. It's nice. I've never done it before, but you know, like with anything, you learn a lot. You, you do. The best thing to mistakes. do is fail. Like learn and do it and fail. Exactly. That's how you properly learn. Totally. Totally agree. Don't don't just read all the books. Like actually go and do it and fail at it. Yeah. Because you will succeed from doing that. Right. Like, That's my input. Like... <laughs> Should I? Like... Right, so this is breakfast. Looks good, man. Looks good. It's uh, it's onion, chorizo, potatoes, and then eggs on top with um, mixed herbs as well. Oh. So I'm just gonna break up a little. Cook, cooked on a skillet. Yeah. Just need the forks. Let's tuck in. It's probably still cooking. No. Oh. Oh. It is nice, guys. It's nice. Hot. Yeah, really hot. That is brilliant. Mm. Mm. 
a nice mix of flavour. So, what's the plan after breakfast? So I think we need to get a fire reflector built yes. here yep. because that rain's going to come in as well and if we're collecting yep. wood, at least we can do it. Maybe get some firewood as well. Firewood as well, lots of firewood for tonight. And then um, we're going to take Amber for a bit of a walk around the woods. It's a massive woods this, that we're in. It's actually almost like a small forest. It's uh, huge. It's not really a woods, it's, a, it's an actual forest. So it is massive. Mm. But uh, So we're going to take probably Amber, take her around, burn her, burn her out, burn some energy out. Um, yeah, collect some firewood, build a fire reflector, and then maybe a, a, any other camp tasks. And by then we'll probably be ready for the next meal. <laughs> we, we are yet to have this heavy rain that's uh, forecasted. Been, there's been a sprinkling, if that, a sprinkling of rain, no heavy rain. The wind well, is picking up though. It's meant to be 40 mile an hour tomorrow morning. And from what little sky you can see, it's not very dark. It's quite mm. light, the clouds are quite light, yeah. quite thin, nothing threatening. If it comes, yeah. it's going to be a heavy shower. Mm. If it comes. Just had our breakfast. We're chasing the breakfast down. With a nice bit of fruit. With a fig. And I was saying to Dustin, he said, have you ever had figs before? And I said, I've had a fig roll. Some of you might remember the fig rolls that you can get. But I've never had a, a fig itself. So teach me what we do. So what you do is you just get in, pinch the top, and, and you're just trying to rip it open. Okay. Yeah. And you just open it like, like that. That's the inside of a fig. It's the inside. This is how I eat, how I eat them, by the way. <laughs> okay. So once, the, once, you, once you've opened them up, you just crunch it up. Oh. They're lovely, so refreshing as well. They're not how I imagined they would look. Mm. I was saying to Dustin, they look like a mouldy onion <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> they definitely don't taste like it. No, nice and sweet. They are. Not very strong flavour, but very subtle. No, almost like watermelon, where mm. it's watered down. Like it's... Somewhere between like a watermelon and like a kiwi as well. Yeah. Not quite a fig roll, but... <laughs> no, not quite. Not Probably bad. slightly healthier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. <laughs>
here to sit. Wind's definitely freshened. The wind? Yeah. Yeah. We we're just really lucky because we're very, very sheltered in here. It is so dense, isn't it? As soon as you leave the woodland, get it, as soon as you, you reach the end of the, the edge of the woodland. Yeah. Like the it was blistering out there. We'll, really windy. Guys, we will show you the wind in a minute out, out near the, now the, out in the, uh, the open areas of the woodland. It's way windier than in here. It's easily, I'd say 20 mile an hour out there. Yeah, I wouldn't like to be camping. No. In the tent out there, in the open. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just lashing these, this firewall together. Just, you know, quite basically, I'm not doing anything luxurious, just a couple of lashes, half hitches, uh, and it's just going to keep it all together because the top log is this big top log, and it's a bit rotten, but it would do the job, is um, pushing these support sticks apart. So Sometimes if you're doing a big high firewall, a fire reflector, you want to be doing this midway through and then at the top as well. If you do it just at the top, it ends up bowing in the middle and putting loads of pressure on the sticks. So if you're doing a big thick firewall for winter or fire reflector, tie these halfway down and then at the top as well. And then start stacking your logs after that. Just doing a simple Canadian jam knot. Very easy, just an overhand knot like that if you can see this i'll do it in the light there and then another overhand knot like that so that's effectively acting as a stopper knot you wrap this around the tree the branch and then you pull it back through and i'll show you that the other side there is my canadian jam knot like that take one end around the stick and use this working end to push through that second overhand loop that you've made cinch it down tight and then you can ratchet down on it and it pinches on itself the knot and that just gives you a good starting point <clears throat> to pull against and it doesn't slip but it's also really easy to undo because you've got this tag end here which you can pull and it undoes the knot nice and easy so there's other names for this knot canadian jam knot i think there's a it's a type of jam knot there's quite a few different types of jam knot and that way I can just wrap around, pull it nice and tight. It's a bit awkward with that bit there. <clears throat> then I personally get to here and I wrap it around there and kind of frap it. You can frap it over the top there like that. And then finish off with just a half hitch because it just holds itself then. Those fraps help to pinch it down. And that's like guitar string tight now, rigid. So the wind is really fresh and now I don't know if you can tell on the microphone, but it's definitely picked up. This is what was forecasted, which is okay. We're prepared for it. It's certainly gonna put the old shelter to the test. Look how well that blends in. That is awesome. It really does blend in. All made from hazel saplings and a bit of tarp. But yeah, so we're going on a little walk to try and show you some windier areas because it's blistering through, but because it's so dense, we're okay back there. But these trees are swaying. Look at the size of some of these trees. There's a lot of dead wood up there. <laughs> Just hope the shelter's all right.
2.30 guys, I think we're just beyond 2.30 um, and it's got really dark all Ooh, of a sudden. Look at those clouds. Oh, that's some rain clouds coming. The rains are coming. That is definitely some rain clouds. Yeah, it's a good job we moved that tarp. Yeah, so what we've done is we had to move the tarp back because we know the, the rain's coming. The wind is here and it's very strong out in the open. It's yeah. not as strong here, although you can probably hear it on the microphone. There's some big trees big swaying. Big poplar trees. Yeah, we're gonna swaying we're gonna time. keep an eye out on everything, uh, just to just to check. There's no deadfall. That's obviously you know, looking like it's gonna come down. But you can see by the camera, it's gone dark. It's only 2:30 in the afternoon. So we've moved the tarp back because there it wasn't overhanging the front of the shelter, and that meant it, that means that when the rain is heavy, because there's a lot of leaf cover here, so we should be alright for a while. But once it penetrates that leaf cover. Then it's going to start dripping from the front of the shelter and we'll just have this puddle in the front of the shelter. Yeah. So we decided to move the tarp back, what, three feet? Three feet, a metre. About three feet to a metre, moved it back, really secured it down and now it's looking good. Like, right, so yeah. We've so got now a good if, cooking area. If it rains, it's actually going to just run off, off the side of it and not yeah. drip direct, directly in front of where we are yeah. for camping, cooking, eating. Exactly, so it. we're now prepping for the next snack. All I do is eat with Dustin. That's pretty much all. That's, that's all. That's probably what you guys think we do is just eat. That's, we just eat and make some build stuff. But and drink beer. And drink beer. We drink some fine ales. But what we're going to do is um, cast some sticks up. Dustin's not actually told me what I'm doing here. He just said, get the bark off this stick, flatten it up like he's done. We need two of these. And then he's going to tell me more after. And then we need a little bit more willow. A little bit willow. Okay. So this is willow. We're just going to sterilise these again. Yeah. Over the fire, just over the flame, just to dry them off a bit, sterilise them, and then we will be skewering something. I'm excited. Something I'm sweet. An afternoon treat. Okay. A sweet treat. Because that breakfast was pretty hefty, so it was nice. You know, I don't feel too hungry after that, but a little snack wouldn't go amiss. Yeah, maybe another cup of tea? Yeah, I'll always, always another cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, Dustin is preparing up a storm, I believe. <laughs> right. Forget the storm outside. This is about to be a storm going on right by this fire. Right, so this is just a, an afternoon treat, something sweet. I'm just going to cut into the banana a little bit, peel away the top, that top bit of skin. Now once we've got that, I'm just going to take some chocolate and just press the chocolate into the banana. The idea is that when this is over the fire, this will melt and it will go into a nice oh. banana-y, chocolatey, <laughs> sweet treat. So that one there. There we are, one left. Too late. Oh, <laughs> sneezy lose. I sneezed. <laughs> now here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Blue Peter. So this just threads straight into, straight in through the banana. Thread that one on. Move this stick back a bit. Thread this one on. So I'm sure you guys can see where we're going with this. They look like mini Viking ships. They do. <laughs> they do. Now, I'm gonna place these into there. Slide this one up a little bit. Right, just need some heat now. Let's grab some of these coals. We got a nice one there. So we'll just have a little fire of hot embers. We don't really want a flame. If it flames up, we'll just come along and we'll move them about until the flame goes out. But I'm gonna I'm gonna dig through this fire and try and get some nice embers to to get underneath our bananas. A 
don't know if you guys can see this. It looks really light, but really, if I put the camera settings on properly, it's uh, it's quite dark up there. It's windy, so we're going to try and go on a uh, firewood hunt. Yeah, as much firewood as we can now, because we don't really want to be doing it in the dark, do we? We don't know. I mean, it's all about putting the effort in now. While yeah. it's dry. Yeah. Before the rain hits, before the, the sun goes down. Yeah, exactly. We've got the rain forecasted. Wind's going to be around. Let's exert some energy, get some firewood. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much dead wood around. Okay. There's so much dead wood around. <laughs> that's all that dipping sauce in there. Yes, that's all our dipping sauce that you had last night and the cheese. <laughs> oh, I don't know what Jacks would be thinking about this. Oh, he'd be jealous. He'd be he'd really be jealous. jealous. He would be, yeah. I'm going to get a cold shoulder when I get oh, back yeah. home. If only he knew. <laughs> cup of tea. Fancy cup of tea? Oh, always. 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 That's a rhetorical question to an Englishman. Yeah, a proper Englishman. <laughs> yeah. Leave them for a minute, put the kettle back on. Actually, just move it aside. I don't need it for the moment. No. It's been about 20, 25 minutes since yeah. we had these on. Oh, I can see some melted yeah, chocolate really. there. Here we are, let's just slide these off. <laughs> these two wow. bits of wood, we don't need them anymore. <laughs> no. Moment of truth. So I'm guessing the bottom of the banana skin obviously burns, but you don't eat the skin, do you? Exactly. So exactly. The, the chocolate, it's already melting on my hands. <laughs> Oh, it's just falling apart. Brings back memories of that pancake we had. It really does. Chocolate and banana pancake. Oh, that's awesome. It's really good. That is awesome. Well, it all cooks and it comes in its own packaging. In its own say, foil. Own disposable bowl, basically. Great project for kids. Like parents, yeah, yeah. Out, parents out there with kids, what a project to, to get kids into kids the outdoors. Easy as. Banana boat chocolate. Banana <laughs> boat chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, it's lovely. Mm. i just show you guys and make you a bit envious. Melted chocolate. The banana is the bowl in itself. Just scoop the spoon in. Get in that chocolatey goodness. Mm. And a cup of tea to wash it down. Exactly, and and no washing up really, no other than up. a spoon, mm. which we'll wash up in the tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Over halfway through already. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> I wish I was more. Yeah, I know. Should have put about four bananas on that. <laughs> it's nice because you can just slow cook it. Mm. Not you know, even if you leave it an hour. Yeah, it's, it's probably just not gonna. It through. Yeah, it's just keeping it warm. That's all you've got to do. Mm -mm -mm. That's awesome, man. Look at that, job done. Five minutes, not even five minutes, I reckon. What's the camera say? Two minutes, 12. <laughs> if you've never tried this, 
give it a try next time you're out camping. Yeah, highly recommend it. All disposable, all biodegradable. So this is a little idea of how you can cook an egg if you manage to accidentally forget your container or your cooking pot. Gather yourself a bit of moss, place your egg in the middle, and then scrunch it all up like this. Then using some honeysuckle, or pretty much any old vine you can manage to you can find. Using the honeysuckle, tie it off. So bring that round through there. It's quite, it's quite pliable this stuff, so it doesn't really snap if you get a nice bit. And then pull that in tight. Maybe bring the bottom round and just tie that off as well. Good idea to get this as compressed as you can. Put that round there. Let's have a quick go on this one. And that, that is it. This is our cooking pot. What we need to do now is pour some water over it. Ideally, if there's a stream or a river or even a puddle, I guess, you would put this in there for five or, you know, five or 10 minutes and it would actually absolutely be drenched with water. By putting this directly on, directly on top of the embers and building a fire on top with the water in there, it will then begin to steam and cook your egg. Cooking time wise, well, I don't know, depends on how hot the fire is. Uh, from experience, maybe 20, 25, 30 minutes. And what happens is you, you, you won't be able to pick it out of the fire unless you have a shovel, for example. What I normally do is move the fire away and then because all of these honeysuckle um, uh, vines w w will have burnt away, you just use your, your axe or your knife or your hands or a stick, you open up and then you just reveal your egg. Okay, so we've got a nice bundle. We've moved the fire aside, leaving a, a nice little pile of embers. Now, I'm using a bottle of water, but if this, as I said, if this was a river or a, if there was a river or a stream nearby, which there is, but it's about a 10 minute walk and this is a quick demo to show you what you can do when you forget your cooking pot. So there's a bit of water dripping at the bottom. Stick it straight on and you'll hear, the, you'll hear it steam up straight away. The plan is to build the fire back up. So I'm gonna place that there, that there. As the moss cooks, it'll dry out, it'll start to burn down. But in the center, it should stay nice and steam, uh, nice and moist. Get these out of the way. All right. Oh, there she is, there she is. How's that looking? Oh, oh, oh. Hot? <laughs> oh, quite hot, quite hot. Oh. No way. What do we have here? We have. Cooked? Mm. Got a bit of shell in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe right. slightly on the running side. Oh. But it's hard to know the time, isn't it? Mm. Of how long to cook it. That's amazing. It's messy, it's messy. Oh, that's really good. And it burns, so it burns the outside of the shell a bit, but that doesn't matter. Egg in moss. Well, sorry mate, none for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's just a little... Primitive cooking. You said you could cook something fish in yeah, it. Well, that, that could be fish as well. It could be vegetables. You pretty much cook anything in there. So it's primitive cooking, isn't it, really? Mm. That's amazing. Cool. Got our veg for the evening uh, cooking nicely at the back there. Yeah. Just Ready for in. another feast, people. Right. I'm going to get rid of this. So this is the shelter, we've kind of battened it down a bit more. It's held up well last night. 
Dustin's been sleeping that side. In a bivy bag, I've been this side. So I've got wool blanket this side that I've been using on a deer hide and then underneath some cedar boughs. Not loads because the deer hide takes quite a bit of the stick out and actually some of these sticks are quite thick but they're down my lower leg end. Up here, little pillow, just a, a sort of fold up pillow. Again more cedar boughs, we've got a basket which we brought there which has all our food bits in. And uh, yeah, there's a, there was a big one here which I had to get out the way at the end of the night. There, that really dug into my back. But what makes the difference is actually this, sheep the sheepskin. It's so thick and so padded, it's amazing. They make a huge difference. You just put that part under your back and then you're sorted. Last night we just grabbed a load of cedar boughs like this, chucked them on the bed. And because we were, it was getting fairly late at night, we had a few things to do. We didn't really trim them down. So although I slept quite well, these were still digging in my back. But you know, I didn't really mind because had a few beers but what I'm doing is just snapping these off at the fork so that you know I'm actually lying on that and not the uncomfortable stick part yeah it's a bit more time consuming but got way more time to do it today because we've we've done everything we wanted to do so we're just actually relaxing and making camp a bit better camp's looking good now um, and you know we're not going to sort of build anymore I don't think so I might as well make life a little bit more comfortable and make my bed just easier to sleep on and not worry about my back there's a big stick there at the back but you know even like that oh that's so much better so much better i don't, need, I don't feel the need to do mine because it's so lovely and comfortable yeah i just chucked down so many of these <laughs> these thick sticks and uh yeah i just don't you know just i think the beer just helped me sleep really last night <laughs> well tonight might be beer and a bit of whiskey beer, yeah beer bit of whiskey here oh, yeah. Which we'll we'll probably have later, maybe some walnuts or something. Walnuts, freshly picked uh, from yeah. the park in Wincanton. Oh, it's good, man. It's a great trip, you know. Really enjoying this. Peaceful. Camp is coming along. Progressing. Always helps when you're eating good food as well. Always helps. Oh yeah. Naturally, Uncle Arthur's out. Had to be done. Had to be done. Had to be done. Cheers, everyone. That is the worst of them. So now it's just deer skin. Uh, deer skin again. Probably for down there. And then the pièce de la résistance. If that is a, the right saying. Oh, the sheepskin. The sheepskin. That is it. Actually, that way round. Oh, yeah. Look at Shoulders, that. lovely. Yeah, right up there. That, my friends. That's how you go camping. Is that better? That little bit of effort? Oh, has, it, that, has it made any that difference? That extra 20 minutes, not gonna lie, was, was well worth it. That took me 20 minutes to sort these branches out. Well worth it. Oh, and then a wool blanket as well. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good night. Oh, yeah. One more of them. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Up there, folding in half, starting to look inviting now. Pillow, hoodie, sorted. Cooking wise, we have butternut squash, we've got some potatoes and onion and then these peppers and a bit of garlic. As I was saying earlier, I'm not sure if I've mentioned it actually. No, we haven't. I think we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, yeah. The garlic, I've just put this on the edge of the fire. What this will do is it'll cook those out. The, the, the garlic will cook and it'll go into a paste. So as we open up each clove, we can squeeze out that cooked garlic paste. And it's, it's kind of what we call smoked garlic. It's really good. It's, it brings out such a different flavor. We're going sort of uh, hobo style with our cooking here. A bit primitive. A bit primitive, yeah. It's kind of what we call like dirty cooking. Dirty cooking, yeah. Have, have a smell on that. If I pass that to you. Let's have a smell. You can smell already. Smell it's everyone. Like, it's starting to cook. <laughs> Oh, that smells incredible. So we've got some peppers, some uh, baking potatoes, really, and some butternut squash. Butternut squash. We're, We're in just for give, a treat. We'll give that butternut squash another little turn. Give it a feel. Oh, oh, nice and soft. So when it comes to it, we're going to take them all off. Just scrape off. We could even use the axe. Just scrape off all the charred, all the charred stuff that we don't really want to eat. And we're away. And uh, potato-wise, 
we can just, when it comes to potatoes, we can just scoop out the cooked potato. We don't always have to, you know, use tin foil or boil them. <laughs> Let's caveman it. Let's yeah. just throw them straight on, a bit like the egg. Yeah, exactly. If you if you're short on resources, why not just make the most of it? Right, right. Well, the vegetables are pretty much cooked. They've been taken out of the embers. They've put been put aside. Mike has put the grill on the uh, over the embers, and now it's just ready for these two. So we've got a sirloin steak, and we've got a ribeye. I'm not going to oil it. I'm just going to put lots of pepper on. Going on this rubbishy pepper, <laughs> pepper grinder. There we there go. go. Just a little blockage. Yes. So a bit of pepper on there. Can't beat a bit of pepper on steak. Same again. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'll put this one just along the edge and just move that over. There we are. How do you like your steak? Medium rare. Just that like last right. time. Yeah. Perfect. I've just flipped the board. So we got a nice clean surface on the chopping board. Let's lift that one out. I'm gonna leave her rest for a minute, but let's quickly have a quick look. Oh, perfect. Look at that, those yeah, juices on the top. It's good. And this one, we're gonna give this one maybe another, what, 15 seconds? I'd say so, yeah. He's still got a bit on the end. He's uh, not cooked as much, so yeah, give it another bit. All right, I reckon she's done. Let's take it off. So there we are. Leave that for a minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna get a bit of salt. We're kind of leaning over the fire now, which is not ideal. But the flame's quite small, so it's not really affecting me. Put these veg over there. Yeah, they might look a bit charred, which they are. Certainly on the outside. Certainly on the outside. It's what inside yeah. that matters. <laughs> that is exactly it. So I'll just pick these two up. And now, let's see. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Wow, so soft. It's not burnt at all inside. Perfect, you can just scoop that out with a spoon. Yeah, it's amazing. Or a fork. That's worked out really well. Give this a clean. It's just a little bit of ash. Well, I don't think a little bit of ash had <laughs> nah. anyone, did it? So we can cut these open. And using your fork, it's just gonna be a bit of a smash and grab. <laughs> Just get involved. Oh, look how juicy this is. Yeah. Moving on to the, what we're going to have here, potato. So, how's this potato looking? Charred on the outside. Yep, that's to be expected. Oh, oh look, look at that. Oh. So we can just, using our forks or spoons, we can spoon them out. Here he goes, one each. Onion. So I'm just going to, all the charred vegetables. Cut into this onion. Oh, it just falls apart. Look at that, it absolutely just falls <laughs> apart. That's awesome. Oh, don't forget the garlic. Garlic, perfect. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, I just saw it in the background, didn't want to leave it on its own like that. So I'm going to place it down here, I'm going to grab one of these and look how juicy this is. Really juicy, and just by squeezing, look at that. Oh. This is what I'm talking about, paste. That's what I was talking about. So good. Just smear that onto it. Yeah, it's like butter, isn't it? It is like butter, and it's so sweet. That's absolutely incredible. Now let's get another one. I'll squeeze that paste onto there. Oh, it smells incredible. It really does. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bit more salt for the, for the spud. Spuds. Butternut squash as well. Yeah, that is soft. Really soft, and it's all pretty much just thrown straight on the fire. I should probably turn my head mm. off. So good. You wouldn't think, looking at the charred outside of that, that it would uh, no. be what, the, absolutely the fine inside. No. Yeah. No, that's the potato. It's just a white blob to you guys, but mm. <laughs> cooked through, soft, fluffy. Perfect. It is. Could do a bit of butter. Yeah, just to melt just afterwards, the heat of the spud to let it melt. 
I'll have to put that on the list for next time. Mmm. <laughs> Let's have a go on this butternut squash. Mm -mm -mm. The only kind of cooking utensil we used, well, was the grill really, wasn't it? <laughs> mm. Mm. And that grill's so mm. lightweight, packs yep. down to nothing. Mm. Oh, you need your cook, sir. I do need my cook, sir. What got it? my cook, sir? Let me just go back to the luxurious shelter. Uh, it is... Juggle three walnuts. Right, cook, no. sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is time for a bit of monkey shoulder whiskey. Oh yes. Lovely. Oh yes. So. Thank you very much. In the cook, sir. Bit of in everything the in the cook, sir. I always use my cook, sir, for literally everything. <laughs> Tea, coffee, Every, whiskey, yeah, yeah. rum. It just all goes in. It's all infused in the wood now. Hold on, hold on. And I just want to say congratulations. You're uh, now, you've passed 600,000 subscribers. You're now wow. on 600,254. Oh, my. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. Well done. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Thank you for all your support. Really appreciate it. Cheers. That's a fine whiskey, that. Oh, smooth. Isn't it? That's really nice. Now we've got a feast as well. Guys, the feast has not ended. Oh. All right, let's, uh, let's just show a walnut up to the camera for those guys that have never seen a walnut before. I'm hoping you have. But... Who's never seen a walnut? That, my friends, is a walnut. They're quite small. You, sometimes you get them a lot bigger, but... Small? I was going to say, these are like the biggest nut we have. One of the biggest nuts oh, we okay, have. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> as far as our British nuts go, <laughs> these are one of the biggest. But my they, they, they are small in a walnut sense. These and the hazelnuts. Oh, hazelnut, yeah. I agree, actually. I'd say walnuts are up there And they store really favorite. well for winter. For winter. The, the husk is really uh, strong on the walnut. So you just use a good old axe. Stick with the bushcraft. You use the axe for everything. Yeah. You, you open them up. And they look like, kind of like brains. <laughs> they do, they do. <laughs> they do a bit, don't they? Look at that. Walnut City. There you go, look at that. Do you know they go really well with the whiskey? Mm. Speaking of which. Yeah, nuts and whiskey. What a blend. Cheers, mate. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, if you're still watching, really appreciate it, because I know it's a slightly longer video than normal. It is. Do head on over to Dustin's YouTube channel, Bushcraft Tools. Put a link in the description. Dustin's been doing a lot of kind of behind the scenes of this whole three day trip. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, Definitely go and check his channel out. Hit the subscribe button. Give him a comment. Tell him hi from me, even though he's just across the, the shelter from me. And uh, yeah, go and support him. Uh, it's been brilliant, mate. I've absolutely enjoyed it. Again, we've, we've eaten always. like kings again. Standard. Without fail, you always <laughs> produce some damn good food. Cheers. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, man. Great company. Cheers. Great having you. To good company, guys. To good company. Well, good morning, everybody. And a fine English morning it is. We've had easily 40 mile an hour gusts this morning. The forecast has, the forecast so has finally arrived. It, we, we woke up, we were just saying this morning, we woke up a couple of times in the night, praying that trees wouldn't fall over on the shelter. It is absolutely ripping through this woodland. God knows what it's like out in the open right now. But it's just, it's a very, very strong wind. It's we got that cosy feel of being in a tent when it's raining. It, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've not, nice got, we've not got too much rain yet, but it's due to come in about now. But there's still loads of leaves on the trees, so that's maybe why it's 
uh, not coming through the kind of canopy level to the shelter yet, but we slept pretty well. T I slept pretty well, too fair. Did you sleep all right? I did. I slept better last night than I did the first night. Yeah, it's whiskey, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but we did, uh, yeah, we slept well. We had just about enough fire this morning to uh, to get a kettle on and get some tea, because us Englishmen can't fo can't function without any tea. Got but, tea? Yeah, but um, the fire reflector burnt in the night. The fire ate into it and just started feeding through the wood. And I woke up at one point looking at the fire reflector, thinking, "Oh, this is just going to erupt in flames." But because there was so much wind, it was just putting the flame out. Like the flame would come up. And then the wind would just go, whoosh, just a gust, and it would just put the flame out. So it's quite interesting to watch, but those at the same big, time nerve-wracking. <laughs> those big poplar trees, they must be, they were swaying yesterday. Oh, but they're 90 degrees today. Really? They must be going 10 metres either side yeah, yeah, with, yeah. The, with the wind. Yeah, they're, they're big trees actually, proper tall ones, aren't they're they? They're really tall trees. But yeah, it's worrying because there's a lot of trees with ivy all around them. And I always fear because that, that ivy is so much resistance for the wind to hit that it, it makes trees blow over so much easier and there's a lot of trees with ivy on them here. Who knows? I don't think we're gonna hang around much longer today, guys, to be honest. It's, it's about 7.30 now, it's still pretty dark out. I think it's, it's gonna be one of those, drink tea, pack up, Yeah. go. Yeah, because the forecast is a shocker. What should we do with the frame? Should we, should we... Let it go back to nature. I can't drink my tea yet, because it's just in the metal <laughs> cup and it's, although it's lovely and warm on this cold day, <laughs> it's just too hot to drink. It'd take my lips off. Just I'll drink it, and there'd be a pair of lips left on the <laughs> on the can. Like <laughs> a <Funny> cartoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the remnants, ladies and gents, of our fire reflector, which got eaten by the fire over in this corner. Absolutely destroyed. Still got my paracord left, which is slightly melted. But I'll be keeping that. We have a break in the wind, this is where we've come out. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it goes. Literally, most that fire burnt out to that wind. You'd have way more coal. You have little ashes there as well. Yeah, I know. That's the wood I mean. burn. You'd have so much more ash there from uh, previously. And that is... Oh, you got this, the hide up here as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's camp for the last three days. Those cedar boughs were perfect as well. Glad I adjusted them yesterday. Good little shelter. Surprisingly solid. Yeah. You know, it's not perfect not by any means, but it's held up in these strong winds. Hey. And it puts the fire out.
The other day we reinforced these, uh, the back end of this shelter, Dustin, with grabs of logs just to pin it all down. You can see how it's kind of billowing out now where the wind's getting underneath it. But it's all pretty secure. We've had no problems with it. Now it's going to billow out. <laughs> now we've got a tunnel shelter. Wind tunnel. We were saying earlier with the shelter that it sort of looked like a tent or a bivy, like a fishing bivy you get over here in the UK. But with all these strong winds, usually a, a normal tent would just would, would rattle, wouldn't it? It would just, in the wind it would flap like that and you just hear the noise all the time. But because of this frame, it stopped, the wind would hit the shelter, but it stopped all that flapping because these were just absorbing all of the, uh, the wind blasts and gusts, which means that Actually, it was very quiet inside the shelter throughout the whole time that it was windy, which is awesome. But we're going to do the kind of bushcraft thing and get it back to nature, leave, leave everything how we basically found it and uh, try and, yeah, leave no trace. Giving back to nature as nature gave to us. There is, there is base camp, what's left of it? You'd never know. Swept some leaves over. Got rid of the, uh, the structure, the hazel sapling structure. Leave no trace, people. And now, you can experience the full wrath of the wind on our way back to the truck and the car. This is, this is mental out here. Absolutely mental. We were so we were in such a safe spot in we that were, dense we were, woodland. We were. All that ivy climbing up the trees. It kind of gives you just a big... shielded everything, oh, didn't it? Shielded. This is look at this. <laughs> That's some serious wind going on now. Gusts of 40 mile an hour, they reckon. It's certainly gusting all right. <laughs> it's mental. I'm glad it's hit today on the way back to the truck, and not the last two days. But it's not it's not too far to go. All the leaves come down pretty much. Uh, autumn is here for sure. For sure. Although look at the, the leaves on the trees are still pretty green, but loads have fallen on the floor. What a trip. What a three days. Reset, nothing like three days in the woods to reset the body clock. It's been good fun, really good fun. This is beautiful, look at this.
Look at these trees. We're all back at the truck in the woods. She's been here three days and there's some leaf litter. Plenty of leaves. Oh, I need to clear all these off before I get going. The, yeah. the battery's even flashing red. See that? Oh, it is. I'm literally out of everything. Batteries, I've gone through, what, three camera chips? Yeah. So much footage. Lots of footage. It's going to be a long video for you guys, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much if you, uh, if you watched it all the way through. Go and check out uh, Dustin's bushcraft courses, westcountrybushcraft.co.uk. Go and check out his other websites, all in the description below, his Instagram and everything. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be back with Dustin really soon. We're going on another epic three-day trip. This time it's going to be a mixture of uh, woodlands, and a coastal trip coastal. as well. I'm looking I, forward to that. Yeah, you guys, you coastal guys have been really asking me, pestering me loads to get back out on the coast and do another camp. So do a bit fishing. Yeah, so sometime this month, maybe end of the month, a video might yeah. be out about the uh, the coastal trip. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget, TA Outdoors merchandise. There's a link in the description below. I'll see you guys real soon. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers guys. Giving back to nature.